The biotech maestro saw its shares drop by 13% in pre-market shuffles, all thanks to a fresh twist in its annual outlook dance. So, what's the scoop? Ginkgo, based out of Boston, Massachusetts, did a bit of fine-tuning to its revenue forecast for the cell engineering business. They started with a range of 145 million to 160 million, but now they're tightening it up to 145 million to 150 million. In Q3, this segment brought in 37 million in revenue, strutting with a 51% year-over-year boost. Impressive moves, right? But here's where the plot thickens. Big shout out to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring our video and its analytics. Make sure to get your 14-day free trial of Seeking Alpha. Premium via the link in the description. You can only get the 14-day trial through the link below, so make sure to check them out, guys. BTIG, the market whisperer, had already sounded the alarm about Ginkgo's cell program guidance before the Q3 call. They weren't exactly on the same page and even downgraded Ginkgo's stock from buy to neutral. Why the change of heart? Well, BTIG wasn't vibing with Ginkgo's new success-based pricing model. It seems they're not dancing to the same tune, and to top it off, macro factors might be casting some shadows till 2024. Now let's talk about the biosecurity segment. Despite a 56.2% year-over-year dip in revenue to $18 million, Ginkgo's raising its expectations. The new target for biosecurity revenue in 2023 is up to 110 million, giving it a bit of a glow up from the previous at least 100 million. Zooming out, Q3 revenue took a bit of a hit, down 16.5% year over year to $55 million. Blame it on the expected slowdown of K12 testing in Ginkgo's biosecurity segment. Loss from operations did manage to slim down from a hefty 655 million last year to 286 million. But the earnings per share hit a sour note at 16 cents, missing the Wall Street groove. Ginkgo is eyeing total revenue for the year in the $250 million to $260 million range, not too far off from the earlier $245 million to $260 million. The adjusted EBITDA loss? Well, that took a bit of a stretch, widening from 72 million in the same quarter last year to 84 million. Blame it on the higher expenses in the cell engineering segment and the anticipated dip in biosecurity revenue. Despite Ginkgo Bioworks confirming its revenue guidance for 2023 based on early assessments, the company witnessed a more than 7% dip in its stock on Wednesday. The company remains steadfast in its projection of achieving a revenue range of $250 million to $260 million for the year, a figure well within the Wall Street estimates which hover around $258.65 million. Within this, the cell engineering segment is anticipated to contribute revenue in the ballpark of $145 million to $150 million, while biosecurity revenue is expected to align with the previously communicated guidance of up to $110 million in 2023. Additionally, Ginkgo aims to stay on track with its goal of integrating 80 to 85 new cell programs into its platform during 2023. Expressing his satisfaction with the growth, particularly in the biopharma sector, Jason Kelly, Ginkgo's co-founder and CEO, highlighted a notable increase of over 50% in the portion of cell engineering revenue attributable to biopharma customers over the past year. Despite these positive indicators, Ginkgo concluded 2023 with a stock drop of more than 7% even though the company maintained a robust financial position, boasting nearly $950 million in cash and cash equivalents. The Q3 financial report of 2023 for Ginkgo Bioworks 
unveils a nuanced narrative. While the spotlight is on the rise in cell engineering revenue, reaching $37.2 million from $24.7 million year on year, there's a contrasting overall revenue decrease to $55.4 million from $66.4 million. So Ginkgo Bioworks just sailed through its Q3, and let's just say the waters were a bit choppy. The tough macro environment and the COVID testing business winding down didn't exactly set the stage for a blockbuster performance. Now it seems like investors are getting a reality check on Ginkgo's business maturity. The revenues took a dip and losses decided to join the party. It's like Ginkgo is still in the early chapters of its business novel and investors looking for instant returns might need to pack some patience. Now, Ginkgo's whole deal is based on this belief that if you go big on scale and sprinkle in some data magic, you've got yourself a competitive edge. The cell engineering programs are essentially data factories, churning out insights that should level up, strain engineering over time. The only hiccup, the financial results haven't exactly thrown a party for the expected economies of scale. But hey, improvements are happening. Ginkgo is waving around program-level data that says, look, we're making some serious upgrades early in the design and build test cycle. Now, in the realm of cell engineering, it's been a bit of a mixed playlist lately. The biotech venture capital tap is running dry. And Ginkgo says the sales cycles are taking their sweet time, thanks to the macro environment playing hard to get. But fear not, Ginkgo is throwing some process improvements into the mix, like jazzing up the contracting cycle and doing the success-based pricing boogie. It's putting a spotlight on the biopharma segment, even though convincing folks in drug discovery is apparently a tougher gig. By the end of Q3, Ginkgo had won 16 programs up and running on the platform, marking a 36% growth from the previous year. But here's the thing, don't just count the programs, it's like counting the number of hits on a Spotify playlist, but not really vibing with the music. For Ginkgo, the quality of these programs might be even more crucial, especially with the big goal of capturing downstream value. Landing a big deal with a heavyweight like Pfizer is way more impactful than a string of tiny deals with startups that might not exactly hit the commercial charts. So, as Ginkgo sails through this business sea, it's a bit of a journey. The promise is there, but the instant gratification, well, that's still in the making. The biopharma spotlight might be where the plot thickens, but the story is unfolding over years, not just months or quarters. Ginkgo Bioworks recently joined forces with Pfizer for RNA drug discovery, marking a collaboration that could be worth up to $331 million. This partnership aims to synergize Ginkgo's prowess in synthetic biology with Pfizer's expertise in drug development, showcasing a commitment to cutting-edge innovation. This partnership, potentially valued at a hefty $331 million, isn't just a collaboration, it's a milestone in the biotech arena, highlighting the trend of synergy between avant-garde biotech players and established pharmaceutical giants. For Pfizer, this collaboration marks a strategic stride into the swiftly evolving realm of RNA therapeutics. The appeal of these therapies lies in their adaptability and rapid development potential, especially vital in responding to emerging health challenges. Zooming out, this alliance speaks volumes about the converging paths of synthetic biology and pharmaceutical research. It's a nod to the pivotal role of innovative platforms in crafting advanced therapeutics and signals a move towards more collaborative strategies in drug development. Ginkgo Bioworks undertook considerable cost-cutting measures with operating expenses slashed to $341.8 million from $721.3 million. This reduction, especially in R&D and administrative costs, contributed to a reduced net loss of $302.9 million compared to $670.1 million year-on-year. Year. Financial Health Check, 
asset snapshot. Ginkgo Bioworks boasts liquid assets totaling around $1.134 billion, a combination of cash, cash equivalents, and investments. Current ratio, a robust 6.78, indicates a strong short-term financial position, calculated by dividing total current assets by total current liabilities. Liabilities landscape, Current liabilities are $168.46 million, with substantial non-current liabilities, including deferred revenue, $170.01 million, and operating lease liabilities, $403.66 million. Over the last nine months, Ginkgo Bioworks witnessed a net cash burn of $237.67 million, translating to a monthly burn rate of approximately $26.4 million. The likelihood of Ginkgo Bioworks needing additional funding in the next year seems low, considering the current cash runway and assuming no significant alterations in expenses or revenue streams. Short-term financial health, solid. Long-term financial health requires cautious monitoring due to considerable cash burn and non-current liabilities. As Ginkgo Bioworks orchestrates the symphony of RNA in drug discovery, it's not just the science that's dynamic, the financial notes also need careful listening. While Ginkgo Bioworks positions itself at the forefront of biotech advancements, entering into a strategic alliance with Pfizer, concerns over financial stability and market sentiment persist. Ginkgo Bioworks is navigating a market that's somewhat unsure. With a market cap of $3.12 billion, it's not flying under the radar, but it's not commanding the stage either, given its cutting-edge work in cellular design and genetic engineering. Analysts are eyeing potential revenues of $258.65 million in 2023, aiming for $435.44 million in 2025, emphasizing strong growth in cell engineering despite some volatility in biosecurity. However, compared to the S&P 500, Ginkgo's stock seems a bit lackluster, lagging at minus 14.59% over three months and minus 8.67% over a year, while the S&P 500 enjoys gains. Now, when we eavesdrop on insider talks, it's a bit concerning. There's been more selling than buying in the past three and 12 months. In the past three months, there's been a net activity of negative 4,688,667 shares. And in the past year, it's a hefty negative 41,589,188 shares. That's a tale of caution in the wind. Putting it all in a blender, Ginkgo Bioworks market sentiment is a bit of a mixed cocktail. Ginkgo's tech prowess and the Pfizer tag are headline worthy, no doubt. But the numbers are playing a different tune. The revenue dance is a bit out of step, showing a year-on-year -year decline. The stock's mojo is also on the decline, trailing behind the S&P 500. Seeking AlphaQuant even says, sell. Profitability for Ginkgo is a puzzle that's still in the making. But here's the real game changer, building up local muscle for biosurveillance. No more outsourcing to shaky third parties. Concentric and Illumina want countries to flex their biosecurity muscles independently. Matt McKnight, the biosecurity bigwig at Ginkgo Bioworks, spilled the beans. Without sustained investments in global early detection, we remain deeply vulnerable to the next novel pathogen threat. Through this relationship with Illumina, Concentric aims to accelerate deployment of our early warning and biorada programs for governments worldwide as they seek to modernize defenses against biological threats. And how's the market taking it? Ginkgo Bioworks stock got a little boost. Ticking up by 0.77%, looks like investors are liking the biosecurity duo's plan to level up global defenses against biological curveballs.